Welcome to the Birthing Your Book podcast, where we share this journey of experiencing full creative self-expression. I'm your host, Karen Hewson, book editor and coach for Soulpreneurs. On today's episode, I'm going to be talking about how I have over and over and over again created more space in my life than I know what to do with. And then what happens when this book editing business lands and the clients are received and I become busy and booked out instead of spacious and booked out. And it's a really interesting experience to have my, you know, the space I have created in my life filled so completely. And in the last episode, I talked quite a lot about the sort of honeymoon period where the, you know, relationships and these new relationships and all these exciting dreams that were um, becoming real really took over, um, took over my life. And it was something that I was thinking about all the time. So for a few weeks there, I really didn't have that ebb and flow and that spaciousness, um, in, in my mental capacity, but also, um, it had, it had become filled up from a sort of time and attention perspective. So, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, the journey I've been on with creating space. And then it's really interesting, but getting to this place where I'm busy and booked out and then deciding, I don't want to be busy. Busy is not something I, I aspire to. When I'm booked out, it means that the spaces I've chosen to make available in my business are booked out, but those spaces don't fill up my entire life. They don't fill up my entire calendar. There's a spaciousness I'm creating and I can blend client work. I can blend recording podcast episodes. I can blend the my own self-expression and creativity in amongst the rhythm that I really desire for my life. And so getting to this place of feeling busy and booked out and like I don't have time and I don't have space and, you know, I need to get on to all these things. Again, in the last episode, we talked about this like perspective of needing to get things done instead of holding the space and then moving forward from a desire perspective. So we can still be intentional about like this, this spacious time is intended for working or it's intended for whatever the heck I want or it's intended for pottering around the house and tidying things up and you know you know getting life stuff done we can have these spaces that we hold with intention for a particular purpose but it doesn't have to become a I should be doing something else or I need to be doing something now it can fully be led by desire because we do desire to be on top of life stuff. It serves us to get life admin done and pay bills and organize, you know, kids activities because we want those opportunities for them. And it only becomes this, um, you know, need to and all of this like heaviness around it when we aren't connected to our desire. So being booked out and busy they are not mutually exclusive. You don't have to be busy to be booked out and you can be booked out based on the capacity that you decide. We each choose what our capacity is for everything in life. Often we don't consciously choose it and we just run ourselves ragged. But when we're shifting into um, this intuitive led lifestyle, and the self-leadership so that we have space for self-expression and creativity and for our whole self and not just for the parts of ourselves that prove useful to other people, um, it really becomes something where we are creating space and we are holding those intentions and we are leading by desire. So what capacity do we have for these things and what capacity do we want for them in our lives right now? It could be that we, you know, we want X number of clients, but when we actually think about having that many clients in our week, we kind of don't want to be on that many calls. We don't want to be, you know, voice messaging that often in our day. And so there's this like misalignment between what we say we desire and what we're trying to work towards and our actual ability to receive it. 
So set your capacity, first of all, to something that really is aligned, and then you can book out that capacity. Booked out doesn't mean your calendar is booked out. (laughs) Booked out gets to mean what you want it to mean. So set your capacity, become booked out. You don't also need to be booked out and busy. So when I found myself falling into this like busy feeling and this busy pace, I was like, oh, no, 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 we don't do this. (laughs) This is not how we operate. This is not the experience that I desire for my life at all. I know that this is optional and I know that I have complete control to shift it because the busyness is simply my perspective and my approach to what is happening. And I touched on the last episode again about it's not what you do, it's how you do it. And I was choosing to do it in a busy way. And I could choose to do it in a spacious way. And something that I found super fascinating and that I am continue to be super, super proud of and appreciative of and grateful of on my journey is that I know what it feels like to have space in my life. I know what it feels like to be really content and at peace and have so much time for everything that I desire to do that I then have to figure out what else do I want? I get it. I, I've, I've gone through cycle after cycle of expanding into, I have time. I don't have to do anything with this time. Everything else is done. So what do I do? What do I do? Cause I get to expand into my desires, into hobbies, into pleasure, into rest. And so when it came to this place of being busy and booked out, I didn't need to like look to anyone else to figure out how to do this booked out and spacious thing. Um, I didn't have to look to a mentor or a coach or someone doing things differently because I'd never experienced it myself. I've gone through a whole journey, which I'll, I'll sort of walk you through a lot of it where I've constantly cycle after cycle been creating more space and more space. And so I now am going through this process of calibrating back to what I already know, calibrating back to an experience I've already had. I know what it feels like in my body. I know what it looks like. I I know that it's available to me because I've had it time and time again. And I just found that so fascinating and so different to a lot of what we probably expect in the coaching industry, especially when we're so... Um, encouraged to calibrate to other people. Like a lot of the like marketing and the way that coaches um, present themselves and their value is like calibrate to my energy, calibrate to where I'm at in my business, calibrate to the things I have learned and where I've expanded to. So as you expand, here is the reference point because we often don't have the reference point. And so by working with someone, they become the evidence, they become that proof, they become the, oh, the experience can can look like this. And yet in this instance for myself, I'm calibrating back to me. And I, I don't, I don't need anybody else in this instance. I know there'll be, you know, I'm working with a coach right now for things, again, to help support and calibrate to something that I haven't experienced before. Um, But through my journey, you know, over the last six plus years, such a huge part of it has been learning how to create space and doing that over and over and over and over again um, to reach where I am now. And I have no doubt that I'll continue to do that because it's a, a pattern of expansion where we create space to receive the next level. And then when the next level lands, we need to integrate, we need to calibrate, and then we need to create new space. So for me now, it's a case of how do I hold the number of clients I desire? How do I hold this business? How do I hold these editing projects and have the spaciousness in my life that I desire? So I want to take you back now to like how this journey of creating space really started for me. And on reflection, I noticed that it's really happened in two phases. And I feel like I'm just at the beginning of the th- of like a third sort of phase, a third theme when it comes to creating space over and over again. And the first one 
the first phase that I went through was very much in collaboration with my husband. And I remember way back when, I don't remember the specific year or anything, it was definitely pre-COVID, um, we found ourselves, my brain is telling me 2018, so we'll see, it might be then. I, we, we had a lot going on. We had small children. In fact, 2018 was when my son was born. Yeah. And so, you know, we had small kids and we had a lot going on. We had like children's birthdays on the weekends. We had catching up with friends. We had, I don't even remember now, but we, we were just found ourselves in this rhythm of life with small children where we were just constantly running from day to day to day. And every single weekend was full. Every single weekend was full of an activity and it just kept us it kept us really busy, but more importantly, it kept us at a pace that we didn't like. We didn't like being that busy. My husband is very much a homebody and an introvert. And I also like a lot of space and time to do whatever I want that doesn't have to be decided beforehand. I like to do things when I want them, what I want, when I want, with whomever I want. Um, and so we'd reached this place in our lives where we were like, this is not working for us. Like, we don't want this for us. It's, and it's not something that we necessarily want for our children. But I think at that point in time, it was just like, we're busy. When's the next weekend we're free? Cause we were craving that space. And it wasn't for another month or another six weeks or something bonkers. And we were just like, no, it, we, we had to draw a line. And so what we decided, and this can look different for everybody. Um, but what we decided together was that one week every month, we would have nothing on. We would like commit to one weekend a month to keep free of any commitments so that we could do what we wanted. We never were like what we felt like on that weekend. And we still might go do things. We, there still might be activities on or friends birthdays that we could choose to do, but we, we weren't committing to anything on those weekends. And it was a difficult time when we made that decision because we were heading into a month, it was May. <laughs> where we had a lot of family, friends' birthdays. There were a lot of kids' birthdays. And so it was a case of, well, what if what if someone's birthday gets booked on that weekend? And and I just said, we, we have to not, we have to say no. We had to put, <clears throat> like, our desires, our needs for space and rest over and above anybody else and anything else. We had to put ourselves first. Um and so that was a really tricky time when we had to think like, well, what if one of our family friends' bird like kids' birthdays are on that weekend? And we're like, well, we're just not going to go. That's just the choice we're making for ourselves. Um, and so we did. We didn't have to make any of those tricky decisions. But I think for me, the pattern in my life has been if I preemptively decide what I would do in such a situation, then the situation never um, eventuates. And I think it's a little bit of the way of the universe going, oh, oh, we don't need to actually present that problem to her because she's already decided. So, okay, she's learned that one. It's all good. Um, so that was the very first thing that the both of us did together was created one single weekend that we kept completely commitment free so that we could take it easy. We could chill. We could just roll, be in the flow and do whatever we wanted. Um, and that was really the beginning of this creating space journey for myself. Um, and that was the beginning of the phase in which I really worked with my husband to create a rhythm to our life that we we both really craved and really enjoyed that had the downtime as well as giving us the ability to go to the events that we wanted and do the activities that we wanted to do. Um, but until that point, life had essentially been running us. We hadn't been like we hadn't been leading the way. Um, so that was kind of that first phase. And I do have, I do have a podcast episode. I think it might be back in, I'm not sure which, if it was season one or season two of the podcast, but, um, it's all about, um, mental and emotional labor. And basically the, 
division or the sharing of the household management, right? And so there's culturally a bias to the woman being in charge of the running of the household, whether or not they also work a full-time job, whether or not they are also the primary parent for the children. Um, so that's a really great episode, which talks through a lot of the other things that I did with my partner, with my husband, to be able to balance out those demands and those needs. Um, and it really came to me, first of all, when we were choosing um, a school for my daughter, and I was basically like, I'm not going to be the sole parent responsible for making this decision. Like, this needs to be a fully shared decision, <laughs> because this is our big one and I'm just not prepared to have that on my shoulders or to set the precedent in our relationship and in parenting our children that I'm just the one who makes those decisions. I'm like, no, we are equal parents and equal partners in this life and in parenting these kids and I'm not going to be the one who just makes the decisions because I'm the one who's the default responsibility for making, for facilitating these things. So we went through a whole process of, you know, me really, uh, my husband and I really sitting down together. We met once a week and we still often do have like a life admin night, we call it. And to start with, it was just me making him aware of all the stuff that I did all the mail that crossed my plate, all the bills that I paid, all of the emails that came through my email, like just all the stuff that happens that he honestly just never saw. So how was he to know about it? How was he to drive it? Um, and so it shifted from, you know, these times of like raising his awareness about what happened to actually beginning to delegate the doing of it to him or the whole responsibility of it to him. Because Part of the like mental and emotional labor of doing these jobs is the actual like coordinating of them, knowing they need to be done, making sure they're done at a certain time. Like none of that is the doing of them. Um, and so I think I give an example in the episode, which is actually a recording of a masterclass I did even prior to the podcast, where I give the example of like a package needing posting and if I was to post the package, I would be like, right, here's the package, here's the packing things, here are where the stamps are, here are where the scissors and sellotape are, let me wrap it all up, where's the address, let's get the address, okay, I'm going to write the address on, okay, I need to go to the post shop, where's the post shop, okay, it's going to be pretty good if I drop the kids off and then I can swing by the post shop on the way home, and then... and then we actually get in the car and drive the package to the post shop and post it right and yet what often happens when we delegate these tasks what happens is oh what do I need to wrap this in where's the sellotape do you know where the scissors are what's the address where does it need to go okay do you know where the post shop is when should I take it is it going to be easiest here or here that my loves is mental labor and I don't know, don't know which side of the partnership you are listening, but um, for me, like, I don't ask someone else those questions. I just figure them the fuck out myself. I look up the address. I search on Google Maps for a flipping post shop. I don't ask somebody else to take, like, I don't interrupt someone else. I don't take time and space and mental capacity up in their brain even if I know off the top of my head where the post shop is, don't use my brain, use Google. Leave my brain to rest. Leave my brain to go do something else that I'm taking care of. So we'll link that episode up in the show notes if that is a particular um, frustrate, point of frustration in your life and you can have a bit more of a listen to that. Um, and definitely come back to me um, if you'd love me to like elaborate on anything and we can have a bit more of a conversation around that. But that was really the first phase of this creating space for me was like us deciding like how much activity did we want in our weekends, in our evenings as well. Um, and then also sharing that household load and balancing that a lot more so that I felt like it wasn't just all on my shoulders and, you know, spreading out the chores and, 
And that's evolved, um, you know, as the children have got over too. So another great example um, is the way that we do laundry. Because isn't there always laundry? I am staring right now at two baskets of laundry that need folding. But here's how we've like shared it out with for our family. So my daughter, who's seven, she puts the load of washing from the bathroom, from the basket that matches the same capacity as our washing machine, which wasn't on purpose, but is beautiful. She will put the load of washing on in the washing machine. And then my husband will be the one that gets the washing from the washing machine and gets it dry, whether that's in our dryer or whether it's hung out on the line. Like he's responsible for that part. Then I'm responsible for folding the washing. And then our four-year-old is responsible for putting his clothes away and running the other clothes to the rooms in which they need to be put away by the people responsible. And so all four of us have an activity to do to um, get the washing washed and clean and dried and away in our drawers. Um, and funny little anecdote, side note, um, I have received a note from my daughter before saying she will not put on any more loads of washing until the washing is folded. So bless her and I love it. So there is a way to create that space and really like <laughs> realign the responsibilities around the house so that if, if you are the default parent, if you are the default household manager, um, that is a really important place to start in creating more space and in sharing it out. Um, and of course it's completely um, an option and available to you to like get a cleaner. It's so much more affordable than so many of us think to get someone in to do the like basic cleaning like every week or every two weeks. So um that we've had cleaners off and on as well um over the times. We don't at the moment because it's dropped off since COVID um, and things, but um it's definitely something that we will be looking to do again. So then the second phase that I went through was really about how I use the space. So we'd recalibrated our lives like as a family um, so that there was space. And the thing that then the next phase was really about like, well, how do I use the space that I now have available? Because we can still fill the space. We can still be busy. We can still be thinking about um our work and we can still be like filling in the gaps of life with busyness if we choose to. This is the, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. And so it was a really important thing for me to feel into what do I want to do with, like, how am I spending my time? Like, how am I filling this space? And I went through these cycles and the first one when I, when I first sort of was like, oh, I have space, like I'm sitting down and I don't have to do anything, there was this real pleasure in being able to listen to a training video or listen to a podcast or um, listen to a, like the replay of a live stream. And so my first phase when it came, my first cycle as it came to this phase was plugging into a whole lot of like inspiration and mentors and having the space to finally consume like all of those like master classes that I'd signed up for and to listen to the podcasts that I had queued up in my podcast app. And it was really pleasurable. It was so fun and so beautiful to be able to sit down for an hour or an evening or an afternoon and listen to something and just tune into something for me, for my interests, for the things that I wanted to develop and grow in. And alongside that, um, because I couldn't just sit and listen and like not do something with my hands, I had to multitask. I hadn't learned not I hadn't like deconditioned this just yet. So I started to do a lot of cross stitch and a lot of knitting. So that would be my thing is like in the evenings, I would sit down and I'd plug into a masterclass or a live stream replay um, or like a video bundle or something. And I would sit there and I would do my cross stitch and I would knit. And it was just something that kept my hands occupied and something that kept my whole brain, like that other part of my brain busy 
so that I didn't get twitchy. <laughs> like I didn't get like, I should be doing more than just this. And I had this beautiful, like f- this beautiful phase where that's what I would do with that time. And it was delicious. And I absolutely loved it. And then I reached the beginning of the next level of creating space where I had time to listen to all the things. So I was getting more refined on it. I was getting a lot more discerning on like, well, what do I feel like listening to? And I'd kind of filled my cup in that area, I suppose, and I'd been able to keep it full. So I didn't need to catch up on as many. I didn't have as many that I wanted to tune into. Or when I had a look at what I had signed up for and what was available, I was like, do I feel like that one or this one or the other one? And sometimes it was like, oh, I don't really feel like listening to one today. So maybe I'll tune into an audio book or maybe I'll listen to some voice messages or And after a little while, I just didn't feel like listening to them as much or as often. And then again, I was like, well, then what do I do? If, if I don't feel like doing this, then, then what do I do with myself? And it was again, this new layer of having more space than I knew what to do with. And so I would learn to sit and do my crafts. And do my my cross stitch and my knitting and not listen to something. And that was very strange. (laughs) That was very, very strange. It's like learning how to rest, learning how to do nothing, learning how to rest my brain. And so that's kind of the next level that I shifted into where it was like, okay, maybe I don't have to be plugged in and learning and expanding my brain and knowledge and awareness maybe I can just be here but I still felt productive like I still felt like I was making visible progress on something because I would I would knit I would cross stitch and you could see the progress it was like a visual thing of um, achievement in that way Um, and so this this continued and went on um, where it was a case of, oh, I actually have space to do whatever I like. Um, I have, <laughs> which I'm really calling myself out on because I'm like, yeah, you do have space to exercise and move your body. You do have space to lie down on your Shakti mat and do a whole lot of yoga stretches. You do have space to go out for a walk around the hill. You do have space. Like yesterday, I have space to take the kids to the library after school and play on the playground and go get a treat from the shop and come back and sit in the sun. Like I have space for all of it. And now that excuse has kind of been taken away. And it's a case of prioritizing what I want to do and what I choose to spend time on. And so sometimes in the weekends now, and it's really interesting reflecting on, you know, where we were like, cra- like carving time out one weekend a month. Now, like we have some stuff on Saturdays, but almost every weekend our Sundays are completely open. Um, it is football season now. So, um, our Sundays are fill up with going to, um, the football when that is, uh, in Wellington at the stadium, but. Like on Sundays now, I might spend two hours making pancakes, <laughs> making pancakes and sat there flicking through a book or like just playing music in the kitchen and dancing away while I flip pancakes. And I would never have felt spacious enough to do that. It would have always felt so busy. So creating the space and continuing over and over again to create more space and to hold the space and to expand into more space, it actually slows down our pace of life. And it creates, it it brings us further and further away from the hurry, from the rush, and from the busyness. And it's a very rare time now where I actually, like, have to be somewhere at a certain time for a certain thing. And I I very much make sure that I create a lot of space and time around these sorts of appointments because I'm used to now living my life at a certain pace with a certain amount of spaciousness in it. 
And so when I don't do that and I do put a couple appointments too close together and I get that anxiety rising up and I'm worrying about being late, I'm just like, what is happening? What is this? And I don't like it. And oh, I see what I've done there and we're not doing that. I am not available for that at all. And so it's a case of recalibrating, which really brings us full circle back to this third phase now that I feel like I'm entering into where my business is expanding and I really desire to expand my capacity to support and hold more clients and students. And so it's a case of, you know, becoming booked out, having that time and space filled up both in a physical time space sense and in mental capacity um, and emotional capacity too with healing and growing and expanding as we do. And then calibrating back to what I already know, what I've already experienced, where it's like, okay, that is not the pace and rhythm I desire for my life. That is not the amount of spaciousness that I desire. So let's recalibrate. Let's bring that back in. Um, so this is the new phase that I'm entering into and I will bring you along to, um, to experience that with me and hopefully that'll be really supportive for you. Um, one book that I read through this, you know, phase of creating more space in my life and one that I've started rereading, um, at the moment is called Rest by Alex Sujung Kim Pang and it's a fantastic book about how to rest and it really talks about rest being the um, other side of the coin to work and how like creatively and even professionally prior to the industrial revolution that like screwed us all over with the concept of productivity um Everybody in any professional field, scientific, investigatory, creative field, um, rest was such an important part of like filling their cup, becoming inspired, allowing their subconscious to work on a problem. Um, and it was really understood and acknowledged. I think we've all got this idea um, from like back in the day of you know, people taking sabbaticals and like going to, I don't know, going to the country for the, for the summer or I don't know what, whatever, what, our, whatever else these privileged people did. Um, but something that's really great about the book is it talks about three types of, oh, it's got two parts that talk through different types of rest and rest and creating space is not not only about doing nothing, a lot of us need to recover and heal and fill our cups in many, many, many different ways before we're at a stage where we can really enter in a enter into a sort of regenerative nature of activity. And I mean, that's something else I'll see if I've got some time to touch on. Um, that is really a, a factor of my this third phase of creating space and realizing I do have energy. I am well rested. I am well resourced. Um, I am well funded. And it's a case of, oh, how can I build up that trust and that safety that I can do things and not become tired, drained, burnt out, overwhelmed off the other side that I can that I actually do have the capacity to to be out and do lots of activities and lots of fun things and come back feeling more nourished and more fueled than ever before. So that is a concept that is like messing with my brain right now. But coming back to the book Rest. So um, in part one, Stimulating Creativity, um, he talks about like, working for a maximum of four hours and then that's at the point where our like mental capacity really does need a regenerative sort of space um morning routines walking napping did we all hear about the experience i had maybe we haven't yet i'm not sure <laughs> if i mentioned this on the podcast yet where i went and had a nap one morning after dropping the kids off and once i woke up this whole idea for a new program dropped into my brain and I was just like, whoa, mind blown. Um, actually stopping, 
We don't actually detach from work and business. And I talked about this in the previous episode. Often we stop doing a work task and we're in family mode or we're cooking dinner, but we are not detached from it. We haven't fully stopped doing it. And then, of course, sleep. We all know at this point how important sleep is. And then um, so that's kind of on a bit of a daily sort of basis, like daily rhythms, understanding when our brains hit a wall and not to keep pushing through, um, realizing how to bring in that ebb and flow I talked about in the last episode about, you know, outward flow of energy and then let's recenter, let's go inward before we then do another like flow of outward energy. So, you know, integrating a morning, a morning routine. That might be a whole nother episode. Um, I actually think I've got an old video on my YouTube channel. It'll be over there where I did a whole month and a whole series on like morning routines and basically the fact it doesn't have to be in the morning <laughs> and, and it doesn't have to be as routine as it's taught a lot of the time. But these are all activities, walking, napping, actually stopping, getting a good amount of sleep, which are really like day to day things. And then um, part two in the book talks about recovery, exercise, deep play and sabbaticals. So, you know, exercise is that physical movement where we're connecting in with our own bodies and we're shifting a lot of energy. And that's a way that we get grounded. That's a way that we get out of our heads and into our bodies. That's a way that we like integrate what we've experienced and really process it. And deep play is another beautiful one, which I'm experiencing a lot when it comes to my embroidery that I am currently obsessed with. Um, you can go have a look on my Instagram account. There's a highlight called embroidery with all of the pretty things I've been stitching. Um, but I've found myself getting very creative with it. I'll often mix up the colors from a pattern or I'll adapt a pattern. And I'm pretty sure I'm not far off like creating my own patterns. And so there's a lot of, you know, creativity and inspiration that is flowing when I am pursuing that hobby. And so there's a case of, first of all, even having the space to pursue a hobby, even having the space to regularly exercise and connect in with our body, having the space to even feel like we can go have a nap if that's what our body's craving. That's why to me, it often comes back to we need to create the space first. We need to learn how to create the space and actually stop and detach and hold these boundaries and prioritize our needs. Um, I've actually been having a beautiful conversation with my friend Amanda McKay about as mothers putting our needs not even above our children's but like on par with our kids and I've been doing this really consciously in a couple of ways um recently I took the kids to a park with one swing and not only did the kids have a turn but I had a turn because it was a super cute swing dangling off a tree that swung round in a 360 degree angle as well as like you know, swinging. And so I was like, no, it's mummy's turn. It's not your turn again yet. It's my turn. And inserting like me as a person, as someone who takes a turn. And we did the same thing yesterday when I took them to the library. And I was like, well, I want to look at books. I want to get some books out too. So they each had turns looking and they, I helped them look and I waited for them to look. And then I was like, it's my turn. And there was even a point where the kids needed to go to the toilet and the toilets were outside of the library. And I said, well, that's fine. Let's go to the toilet. But then we're coming back for me to finish my turn. And I would never have done that before. I would never, ever, ever have done that before. I would have been like, oh, my God, they need to go to the toilet. Fine, we'll just go to the toilet and we'll just move on. We'll just skip over this because, like, it, it's it's we're devaluing ourselves and our own needs. And so that was a really beautiful thing where we don't even need to put our needs first. We can just put our needs on, you know, on the same shelf equally. <laughs> Next to, like, can we take a turn, please? When we're reminding everyone else to go to the toilet before we leave, like, we get to go to the toilet too. (laughs) How many times have I left the house without doing that myself and then, like, getting in a situation where I'm, like, asking Kindy to use their toilet? Um, And then the other piece in the book is sabbaticals. 
And this is something um, we're going to, as I'm recording this, we're going out to the lake next week and I am really looking forward to it. And I was having this moment where I was like, gosh, when was the last time we took a break? When was the last time we went away from our house somewhere else where we weren't needing to do things? Um, and my husband and I had a long weekend back in June. I'm recording this in November. Um, and then I went away in April, but that was to help my grandmother settle into a home and visit some family. So that wasn't really the like, just go somewhere and have the space. It was January. I was like, it's November. I li- we literally haven't gone away somewhere else. And being physically in a different location with a different energy, with space to not have to do things, almost for a whole year. And now I remember, um, it would have been in 20, 2019 because COVID. Um, I, I think it was around the time that I was reading rest and I ended up going away for a long weekend every quarter which was beautiful and it wasn't on purpose. Like I didn't completely strategize this and I didn't really realize that this is what had happened until I was reflecting on the year because it was around things like concerts that I traveled to a different city to, to go with my girlfriends and stuff like this. And it ended up that I'd taken a long weekend away like every three months. And I was like, that is brilliant. That is so brilliant. And I love it. And it's amazing. Um, And so now I'm thinking, you know, with going away to the lake next week, I'm like, okay, how do I do that every every three months through 2023? How do I integrate it so that I'm taking a week off from work every three months? And maybe it's that we actually as a family go physically away from our house because goodness knows that makes a huge difference, too. Or maybe it's just me. Or maybe I just take the kids away or I don't know how it's going to look, but I'm just playing with the idea of like, what if I created that much space <laughs> to be away from the normal routines and allow the recharging to happen, you know, be newly inspired, all of that kind of stuff. Um, so one of the other, um, you know, ways that I created space and rest and sort of space for inspiration um, that I have completely fallen off the wagon with. But at one point, um, I would have one day a week, which was really like school hours, where I would take myself on, I would take myself kind of on a date. I would basically take myself on an intuitive led day. And this was kind of the rule for myself was that it was a day where I was not allowed to do any work, any business work. I was not allowed to do any family household work. Those were the two rules. It was like nothing for my business and nothing for the family household. It had to be for me and me alone. (laughs) And so it was a case of, okay, what do I fancy doing? Where do I want to go? And I think it's very much the concept that Julia Cameron talks about in The Artist's Way when she talks about artist dates. And it's a case of like, like, what if we dated ourselves? And I had this sort of question come into my mind the other, the, a few weeks ago. And I was like, gosh, if, if someone took me on like a really fun date where I was like super excited and was like, oh my gosh, I've been wanting to do this. This is going to be so much fun. Like, what would I be doing? Because by the way, I can take myself. (laughs) I don't have to wait for somebody else to do it. And one of the things was to go ice skating. I love ice skating. When we lived in the UK, I took lessons. I have my own ice skates, which are completely neglected and have not been sharpened in the eight, nine years we've been back in New Zealand. Um, And I was like, I could go ice skating. And I'm like, well, why don't I? Why don't I take myself ice skating? And of course, there's some other resistance and other barriers there to work through. But it was even the idea that I could do it because we so often close ourselves off to these ideas. And this was also a way that I really developed my intuition and, you know, this concept of like leading myself by desire and intuitively leading myself like through business and through life, but also just like even knowing what it feels like to get an intuitive yes versus an intuitive no. And so that was something that I practiced for a little while off and on where I would take myself out and I would drive somewhere that I felt like driving and I would wander the streets of a cute little like 
town. We've got a few little like places close to us here in Wellington. I'd like go to a different place and I'd just wander and I'd see what I felt like. Because how rare is it for us to actually spend time just with ourselves and date ourselves in a way where we go, what do you like? What don't you like? Not when you're considering anybody else, hashtag emotional labor, but when you're just thinking about what you like and what you don't and where you fancy to go and what you fancy doing. And are you hungry? Do you want to go grab something to eat? What do you feel like eating? Does that place look nice? Do you want to try that place? Or do we want to keep walking? Or should we pop into this shop because this looks pretty and we just want to have a nose around? Like we we don't do that for ourselves. We don't have the space to do that for ourselves, and we certainly haven't got the point to the point of creating it for ourselves most of the time. And so I really um I am gonna want to I am gonna touch on the No, we won't talk about the regenerative piece any I think I touched on that a little bit. Um and so that's really where I've got now is that I have all of these tools. I'm, I'm reading the book rest again, which I think it's going to be such a beautiful time as I'm entering this next phase and looking into next year. And, you know, things have opened up post COVID and we can have a look at like, what do I want to do? How do I want to like live my life? What rhythm and space do I desire? Um, to think about sabbaticals think about these weeks off every three months think about taking my Fridays to actually date myself not just taking it off and hanging around home which to be fair at the moment is a restorative thing that's needed after three or four months of having family sickness like there is trauma there to process and heal so we're taking the time to do that um but I'd love to take myself on a date on a Friday to go ice skating like that would be amazing and so you know creating that space like every three months, every week, and also within every single day so that we feel like we have more than enough time for absolutely everything and anything that we desire to do. Oh, it's delicious. I'm so grateful that my journey has unraveled in this way so that I have these reference points to calibrate back to so that now when I'm becoming booked out, Now when the clients are coming, now when there's a lot of, you know, capacity to expand into to hold space for other people, I've already grown such an epic foundation of living a spacious life and of, you know, prioritizing my own needs and giving myself space to recharge. So thank you so much for listening. As always, I would love for you to continue the conversation, whether you want to, um, I don't know, get in touch with me. You'll find ways to do that in the show notes. Or if you want to share on your own platforms and continue the conversation that way, um, I would love for you to tag me if you do end up talking about it or are inspired by this conversation to create and share something more. That's one of the huge purposes behind what I do is simply to like inspire and create the conversation so that this is stuff that becomes normalized and of course we're doing it but also how can I how can I do more of it how can we make our lives even more delicious so if you do share something please tag me at Karen Hewson I'm at Karen Hewson most of all the places and I'll catch you in the next episode